Hello, my name is Brian Atkinson and welcome once again to UK Aircraft Explored. In today's video, we shall be covering the Avro Lancaster's engine controls. We shall be referring to the wartime air ministry manuals that were used by air and ground crews at the time. I hope you find this interesting. The engine control levers for the throttle, propeller and boost cutout together with the engine fuel cock controls are mounted on a quadrant below the pilot's instrument panel. Chains and tie rods connect the control levers to the engine control boxes behind the engines. The inboard engine boxes being mounted on the front spar and the outboard engine boxes on brackets on the front spar. The boost cutout control is cable operated in the main plane. From the control pedestal, the connections are carried down to three telescopic counter shafts mounted on the front end of the main floor. These separate the controls into three groups, which run aft between the floor intercostals to counter shafts at the front spar. The lower connections of the port side group being raised by jockey sprockets at each end to avoid the bomb gear. The controls are then carried up to sprocket boxes on the front face of the front spar, along which they run outboard in each direction to the engine control boxes. In the main plane centre section, the controls are carried in fair leads in front of the spar. The outboard engine controls pass through a jockey sprocket box on the front spar, a lay shaft on the main wheel unit outboard support beam, and through fair leads in the outer plane leading edge to the engine control box. Levers on the engine control box are connected by means of rods to the corresponding levers on the counter shaft on the front face of the fireproof bulkhead, from which rods are connected to the engine. A cover is fitted to the center part of the counter shaft assembly and shields the opening through which the connecting rods pass. The supercharger controls are normally electro-pneumatically operated by switches on the pilot's instrument panel using compressed air from the brake's pneumatic system. The engine controls are divided on each side to serve the inboard and outboard engines and differential links are fitted at the points of division to ensure that both inboard and outboard controls are brought up to their respective stops. The throttle and mixture levers are interlocked. The mixture lever, if in the weak position, automatically returns to the normal position when the throttle is closed for slow running. The boost cutout control is cable operated from the port rear counter shaft in the main floor through a spring loaded crank lever on the joggy sprocket box on the front spar in the inboard nacelle. From the crank lever, one cable is led directly to the inboard engine, while the other follows the other controls to the outboard engine. If the main wheels are in any position except locked down, when the throttle is less than one third open, a warning horn is automatically sounded. The switch controlling this horn is mounted inside the pilot's control pedestal. The slow running cutout controls of Lancaster B Mark I aircraft are interconnected by means of Teleflex controls with the master engine cock controls and operate when the cocks are turned off. A joint is provided in the Teleflex control immediately aft of each fireproof bulkhead. In B Mark III aircraft, the Teleflex controls are installed as far as these joints and are sealed off just forward of the bulkheads. The control is therefore available in the event of Merlin 20 engines being substituted at any time. The slow running cutouts of the Merlin 28 or 38 engines of Mark III aircraft are electro-pneumatically operated by switches on the pilot's instrument panel using compressed air from the brake's pneumatic system. The shutters of the hot and cold air intakes for each engine are operated by means of a small hydraulic jack 
mounted in the engine subframe. The jack piston rod passes through a hole in the fireproof bulkhead and operates the shutters. In the outboard subframe, the jack is mounted on a bracket below the starboard oil tank bearer. In the inboard nacelles, it is attached to a bracket on the fireproof bulkhead and to a short stay. The control valve is mounted under the fuselage main floor, beneath the forward end of the navigator's table, and is operated by a connecting rod from a handle on the port side of the pilot's floor. Well that's it for this video, I hope you found it interesting. If you like what I do on this channel, please click the like button and consider subscribing. And also click the bell, remember it's free and you'll receive notifications when my future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.